Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. It's being called the most extensive gambling operation seen in decades here in Bear County. What the latest on what investigators have found so far? The CDC releases positive and hopeful news about the pandemic. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington. Details coming up. And taking a live look outside with live cam. It's a nice 63 degrees right now, and we're looking forward to another nice day. Hey, good morning, everybody. It is Thursday. It is May 6th. Thanks for joining us. Happy Thursday. I'm excited about the weather once again. It'd be nice if we drop back down in the 50s like we did yesterday morning. Mike Oster, hey, you joined us now live in the studio. Good chance of it. Yeah, yeah that's great. Still very dry air, clear skies, uh, good flying weather. Somebody's coming in for a landing right now over there on the, the runway. Here, I'll get out of the way. There you can see it. Oh, and the camera goes out of focus. Anyway, uh, no, it's a beautiful morning. Nice, pleasant uh, temperatures around the area. Low 50s again in the hill country. You may drop into the upper 40s before it's all said and done out there. Kerrville Comfort Area, 62 here in town. Uh, already down in the upper 50s. Port SA, Randolph, New Braunfels. And the reason for it is we got, like I said, clear skies, light wind, and very, very dry air out there. So the afternoon is once again going to be absolutely fantastic just like it was yesterday. Mold is still on the high side, but it's been slowly getting kind of kind of whittled away each and every day, and it should go down again today, given the fact we have such dry air out there. And uh, this morning we are going to be going for 58 degrees again. Northeasterly wind of, you know, 510, maybe 15 miles per hour. Wind is going to be kind of shifting around out of the east later on. We did hit 84 yesterday. I think we uh, go up a notch or two today. Still very, very nice, low humidity, and I think we're going to salvage tomorrow as well. The humidity won't return until probably tomorrow night. So throughout most of the day tomorrow, it is going to be very nice the weekend, different situation. And hey, good news. More rain chances coming in here uh, probably by next week. Details in just a couple of minutes. Stephanie. Thank you, Mike. This morning, their county sheriff's office is investigating an illegal operation on the north side that uncovered hundreds of gambling machines, narcotics, cash, and a teen who could be a human trafficking victim. This happened at a bingo hall in the 3700 block of Blanco Road. The sheriff says members of the BCSO SWAT team, gang unit, and, and organized crime unit searched the property and found more than 100 machines used for illegal gambling. They also uncovered narcotics, hundreds of out-of-operation gambling machines, and several weapons. The sheriff also says deputies are trying to determine if a 16-year-old girl who was part of a human trafficking operation that was going on within the building. Deputies detained a dozen people who they found hidden in rooms throughout that building. So far, Sheriff Javier Salazar says it's unclear what charges they will face. Salazar says it's taken most of the night to go through the large building, which is somewhere between 20,000 to 25,000 square feet. This morning, San Antonio police still looking for suspects. They say shot and killed a 29 year old man on the city's northeast side. Happened around 645 last night at an apartment complex in the 2300 block of Austin Highway. According to police, the man had gone to the complex to pick up a friend and was waiting in his car when another vehicle drove up next to his car. Police say people in a gray sedan said something to the man and then shot him from inside the car. Investigators say the 29 year old was hit in the head and died at the scene. No one else was hurt. This morning, we're getting new positive projections from the CDC about the coronavirus pandemic. Health, health officials now say there's a path out of it, and we could see new hospital admissions and deaths decline over the next month. ABC's Faith Abube is in Washington with the latest. This morning, a month after this dark warning from CDC Director Dr. Rochelle Walensky. I'm going to reflect on the recurring feeling I have of impending doom. Wednesday's White House COVID briefing brought a more hopeful projection. We have the path out of this and models once projecting really grim news now offer reasons to be quite hopeful for what the summer may bring. The CDC now saying if the U.S. continues social distancing, masking and vaccinations, we could see a sharp decline in COVID cases within the next two months. But the threat of new variants against progress still very real. New data from the Department of Health and Human Services shows younger unvaccinated people are now driving new infections. In the last week, Americans 12 to 17 years old saw the highest increase in the rate of positive COVID tests. Dr. Anthony Fauci on NBC. Adolescents, kids 12 to 15 years old, because of the way they congregate together and their social interactions, 
have a greater chance of spreading infection. In the Pacific Northwest, unvaccinated young people in their 20s fueling a new surge as U.S. vaccination rates drop across the country. The New York Yankees and the Mets now offering free tickets to encourage fans to get the shots. The NFL also giving up 50 free Super Bowl tickets to those who are vaccinated. And if progress continues in the fight against the virus, Broadway could light up again as soon as this September. Something I'm often asked is when will this pandemic be over and when can we go back to normal? The reality is it all depends on the actions we take now. And meantime, Pfizer is waiting for the FDA to approve its vaccine for young people between 12 and 15 years old. A CDC panel could meet as soon as next Wednesday to discuss the rollout of the vaccine to that age group if the FDA gives its approval. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington. Here at home, more Bear County inmates are getting the COVID-19 vaccine. So far, the sheriff's office is reporting about 500 inmates who have chosen to receive a dose of vaccine so far. Meanwhile, the effort to get the rest of San Antonio vaccinated continues. Precinct 1 Bear County Commissioner Rebecca Clay Flores holding a celebration after she opted to get the single dose Johnson & Johnson vaccine. The Pfizer and Moderna vaccines are also available. A reminder that several pharmacies like Walmart and CVS have launched walk-up vaccinations. We have all the details on KSA.com. Time check 436. We are in the lower 60s this morning. The Texas Senate has passed a bill that would let people carry a handgun without a license. We're going to tell you where the bill heads next and if the governor plans to sign it into law. San Antonio Spurs tried but could not overcome a powerful Utah Jazz team last night. There was one bright spot. We have highlights next. And we are sad that the Spurs did not win, but we were happy that we are having great weather here in San Antonio. It's been a nice week so far. We're going to check in with Mike later on. The director of the U.S. Secret Service is preparing to testify in front of House lawmakers later today. It's the first time the agency will appear in an open hearing since the January 6th riots at the U.S. Capitol. Director James Murray has 11 pages of prepared remarks that make only a brief mention of the events of January 6th. But Murray does note the agency has made some operational adjustments due to civil unrest and the rise of domestic extremism. The Texas State Senate has passed a bill that would let Texans carry a handgun without a license. If signed by the governor, it would let anyone at least 21 years old carry a handgun without a permit unless they are prohibited from owning a handgun by state or federal law. In most cases, that would mean having a felony conviction on their record. The bill now goes back to the Texas House with eight Senate amendments. If the House approves the amendments, the bill goes to the governor's desk. If the House does not accept all the amendments, both chambers will hash out their differences during a conference committee. The governor has promised to sign the bill if it reaches his desk. Life in prison, that's a sentence handed to two American students convicted of the 2019 murder of an Italian police officer. Finnegan, Elder, and Gabriel, not a, excuse me, Nadale North were found guilty of fatally stabbing the officers after a botched drug deal. Italy doesn't have the death penalty, so a life sentence is the most severe punishment. The lawyer who represented Elder says the sentences were too severe and the court did not take into account, quote, anomalies during the investigation. The two students previously said they were acting in self-defense. Time for a look at morning sports. DeMar DeRozan and the San Antonio Spurs were hoping for a better night than Monday night in Salt Lake City, but it was same song, second verse against a tough Utah Jazz team overpowering the Spurs. Final 126-94. Jazz shot 55% from the floor and led by as many as 41 points. With this win, the Jazz have reclaimed the number one spot in the West. Meanwhile, Luka Simonich scored 15 points to lead the Spurs for the first time this season. Devin Vassell and Drew Eubanks each had 14. DeMar DeRozan had six, which was his lowest scoring output since a loss to Memphis back in January. One bright spot, Spurs did win the turnover battle, but were on the wrong end of most every other team stat. Spurs have now lost five straight as they fight for that final spot in the NBA play-in tournament. Next up, Spurs move on down the road to Sacramento. 
Game against the Kings is set to tip off tomorrow night, 9 o'clock at the Golden One Center. And a look at San Antonio Missions baseball. Missions lost to the Hooks 4-2 in Corpus Christi last night. San Antonio will continue the series every night, including tonight through Sunday. The next home game is May 18th versus Frisco for a six-game series at Wolf Stadium. Hoping for better luck for, for both teams next time around. Right. Yeah. <laughs> time now, 442 and about 63 degrees right now. You may not do it on purpose, but sometimes it's really easy to be guilty of wasting food, especially with produce. Up next, what you can do to cut down on food waste and how to give rotten foods a new purpose. Also next, we're going to tell you how you could get a seat on Jeff Bezos' first space tourism flight launching this summer. And welcome back. It's 445. A billionaire Jeff Bezos' space agency is auctioning off a seat on its first space tourism flight launching this July. ABC's Gio Benitez has the details on today's GMA First Look. And this morning's GMA First Look is America ready for space tourism. Blue Origin, created by Amazon founder Jeff Bezos, announcing it will launch its first crew into space on July 20th, with one seat going to the highest bidder. We're auctioning off the first seat to benefit our foundation, Club for the Future. Now, we don't know who the other crew members will be, but that one civilian makes it the first time any private citizen launches into space from American soil. The flight will last just minutes, enough to get a view of Earth from almost no gravity. This will ho hopefully open the door for many more people, um, civilians um, per se, to be able to come up and experience what we get to experience. So will other billionaire space ventures like Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic or Elon Musk's SpaceX follow Bezos' lead? It's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, Pittsburgh. 446, every year people can waste hundreds of dollars worth of food. Here's 12 on your side's Marilyn Morris with some ways to cut the waste. From overripe fruits to expired dairy, we trash a lot of food. Cutting back on food waste could save a family of four about $1,500, according to Consumer Reports. So what can you do? If you're throwing out a lot, you might be buying too much food. Shopping with a list will keep you focused on what you'll actually use. To avoid finding squishy veggies in the back of the fridge bins, she says plan to use fresh produce in the order they go bad. Leafy grains and berries are not as hardy as Brussels sprouts or carrots. Freezing extra batches or leftovers can reduce waste, but only if you get around to eating them. It helps to mark leftovers with the date you froze them. Try to use up everything. Give your wraps, soups, and burritos and nutritional boost with leftover veggies and fruits that are getting too ripe can be used in smoothies and muffins. Or consider buying frozen produce. It's just as nutritious as fresh. Keep dry goods in clear airtight packaging. Not only will they be less susceptible to dampness and mold, you're more likely to use up what you can see. Finally, if your produce has gotten nasty enough to toss, compost it. It will turn into nutrient rich soil to help you grow your own. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. Well, it's time to get out this morning, at least for a little while, and enjoy uh, lower 60s, maybe even upper 50s. It's sounding more and more like this could be spring's last hurrah as fi oh. fine as mild temperatures go, my, my, uh, Nice Mike. for me. We, you know, we may have a little bit of a uh, front trying to move through here next week. It will trim temperatures because we are going to get hot uh, later on in the weekend. Mm -hmm. Also some uh, rain chances. So, But yeah, you know, when you get this low humidity and these pleasant temperatures this late in the season, I think you're right about the maybe sometimes the last hurrah. Uh, you know, talking about all the rain that we have had, and this is what's popping up in some folks' yards. Uh, mushrooms and then a lot of times you get all that rain those fire ant mounds start to pop up as well so watch out for that and make sure you do not eat those that pop up in your yard all right outside right now it is absolutely gorgeous out there we've got a lot of clear skies really really nice temperatures and the humidity two point temperatures you know that's what's been so nice made it such a beautiful afternoon yesterday and we're actually have even drier air than this time yesterday morning so dew points have gone down just a little bit really comfortable out there and they're going to be staying on the Comfortable side once again today. Now it's not bone dry air, but anytime you're, you know, at around 60, a little bit below 60 or so, that's fantastic. And we're going to stay in the, uh, you know, 50s on average today, uh, tonight, as well as tomorrow. And then by tomorrow afternoon, we're going to start to see the humidity kind of come back on in here. 
and that's going to really come back in here actually by tomorrow like evening hours. I think we'll still salvage most of the day tomorrow uh, and then Saturday morning a lot more humidity. So watch what happens with the cloud cover a lot more of it by Saturday morning and also a couple little sprinkly showers around here Saturday morning. Then we'll have uh, maybe a mixture of sunshine and clouds throughout the day. I think we're going to be doing it again on Sunday morning as far as a couple little you know sprinkles here and there a lot more humidity and it's going to be even warmer on Sunday. Now late Sunday evening there's a chance for a couple of showers. Now, obviously this has rained well out of our area, but the atmosphere is going to really start to kind of get unstable again. And if anything were to pop, it could be kind of on the strong side. So just kind of something we're going to watch Sunday late afternoon. I don't think there's going to, I didn't put anything in the forecast as far as rain, but it's just worth watching with the, uh, the way the atmosphere is kind of setting up. Then we go into Monday and we'll have a chance for a couple of showers around here. And that's going to be the situation then Monday night into Tuesday. We have better rain chances Monday night, Tuesday, and then even going into Wednesday as well. The pretty good rain chances. So we're going to add to it. Just, you know, if we can get rain, what every week or so around here, every few days, that'd be fantastic. Great pattern to get into. Seven 77 degrees today at noon, sunny skies. Again, a really pleasant day and then a high temperature up to 85. So we'll be a little bit above where we were yesterday, but still low humidity, pleasant humidity. It's going to be nice out there. Wind is going to shift around out of the east. Tomorrow we start off right around 60 again. Get up into the upper 80s, mid upper 80s, couple of extra clouds here and there. Then the humidity comes back in over the weekend. Morning sprinkles around here, low to mid 90s or so, depending on the amount of sunshine on Sunday and plenty of humidity. Then rain chances move on in here middle of next week and we knock back down to about 80 by Wednesday. Steph, have you finalized the Mother's Day menu request yet for your family? <laughs> no, no, yeah, I haven't. A little short stack of pancakes or maybe an omelet. Well, I'm actually so my my hope is to get out and run early before it gets too hot. Right. So we'll, we'll worry about the food stuff later. Okay, Wait, so you're not the, just going to like lounge around and have Luis serve you uh, breakfast in right. bed? No, I can do that after I run. I just don't want to miss my window of opportunity. Right. That's <laughs> a dedicated runner. That's that's true. I guess the Egg McMuffin can be waiting for you when you yeah. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> right now it's 452 on your Thursday morning. And coming up next, a first look at one of the upcoming Game of Thrones spinoffs set to debut soon on HBO Max. Let's take a look at your lottery numbers. Pick three, six, two, five, fireball nine, daily four, seven, zero, one, one, fireball one. Cash five, six, 16, 17, 18, 25. Lotto, Texas, 1, 2, 19, 39, 46, 53. And your Powerball numbers, we have 16, 23, 28, 40, 63, Powerball 1, Power Play 2. Good luck. A sneak peek. Game of Thrones fans will soon have a new show to watch. Plus, Marvel moves up the debut date for their next series on Disney+. Plus. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. HBO Unleashing the Dragons, kind of. It's our first look at one of the upcoming Game of Thrones spinoffs. HBO has released a few pictures from House of the Dragon, which started filming last month. Its stars include Emma Darcy and Matt Smith. So far, no official release date, but we'll probably see it next year. Living up to his reputation as the trickster god, Loki shaking things up. The next Marvel series for Disney Plus was supposed to debut Friday, January 11th. Now star Tom Hiddleston announcing in a new video. Wednesdays are the new Fridays. Look for Loki June 9th with a new episode every Wednesday. Until now, the Marvel shows have dropped new episodes every Friday. Start warming up the stage lights. Broadway will be back in September. The Broadway League and New York Governor Andrew Cuomo announcing theaters will be open for business September 14th at 100% capacity. And it'll be up to the theater to decide requirements. For example, some may ask for proof of a COVID-19 vaccination. And it's a big birthday for George Clooney. The director and Oscar-winning actor and producer is 60 today, while Oscar-nominated Precious star Gabare Sidibe is 38. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. It's now four minutes till five. And coming up on GMSA, a closer look at why we're seeing record-breaking home prices and if there's any hope for people who are looking for their dream home right now. And we're checking out Facebook's latest attempt to connect neighbors with common interests. That's coming up in your Morning Tech Bites. And let's take a quick look at the roads with Transguide. There's 281 and Hildebrand. Things are smooth right there. We're going to go ahead and check in with Samuel King after the break.
Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. The Bear County Sheriff's Office continues to investigate an illegal operation on the north side involving hundreds of illegal gambling machines. Our Katrina Weber is standing by with a live report. Plus, the housing market breaking records across the country, and now Americans who are looking to purchase homes are constantly getting priced out. And could this be it for spring? Mild, cool spring-like temperatures. Are we done for the year as far as how cool it is right now? We'll talk to Mike coming up. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday morning. Thanks for joining us today. I am glad that we're in the 60s once again, and I hope it's not the end of this nice weather yeah. streak. I hope so too, but I'm just trying to be realistic because we know what comes next. Let's worry about that when it gets here. We'll just enjoy this beautiful weather as of right now. And uh, yeah, it's just fantastic. Yesterday was wonderful to be outside. Same situation today. We've got a lot of clear skies out there. 61 degrees. That bottom number right there, uh, dew points down to 52. That means the air is nice and dry and comfortable. It's open up the windows kind of a day. Once again, we will be uh, right around the upper 70s at noon and then get up to 85 later on today. Yesterday was 84, so we'll be in that ballpark, a couple of degrees above that. The aquifer continues to go up another four tenths of a foot, which is fantastic news. And the allergens we've still got a lot of mold hanging around there, but it has progressively gone down for the past about uh, three, four days or so, and it should be lower today as well. Pecan and grass are both on the low side, so we've got a lot of dry air down here at the surface, and then you go upstairs, and this is the water vapor imagery, and when it's this really dark shade like this, that means dry air upstairs, and that means we are going to have some more beautiful blue skies once again today. So, yeah, it's just going to be not only feeling wonderful, but looking wonderful as well. So clear, coolish. I mean, we've actually got some low 50s and maybe even touching some of the upper 40s in some of the low lying areas in the hill country this morning. And then later on today, sunny mid 80s, and we are going to be very nice again tomorrow. Humidity's really doesn't look like it's going to make a, a big return until starting tomorrow night. So we'll have another great day tomorrow and then weekend. Yep, it is going to warm up and especially it's going to be more humid. We'll have some sprinkles in the mornings, both Saturday morning and I think as well as Sunday morning. And good news, we've got some more rain chances coming on in here by next week. Details on that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, the man, the myth, the legend, Samuel King is here. Good morning, Mike. Thank you very much. And good morning to everyone out there. This is 281 at Hildebrand this morning, and you can see traffic uh, flowing well. But we had some intermittent closures uh, on this stretch of 281 overnight. Uh, so we'll take a look, a uh, closer look here. We did see just a few minutes ago some of the road crews. They are doing some sign work on 281 overnight uh, this week between Bassey and I-35. Uh, so some delay showing up on our map a little bit northbound down to 28 uh, miles per hour at uh, St. Mary's. Uh, but that is improving very quickly this morning. The crews are wrapping up their work for tonight. Looking at the uh, rest of the region, not too much going on. Some uh, more delays sort of north on 281 near 1604. And also some delays coming out of New Braunfels this morning on I-35 down to 18 miles per hour. So that's adding to your travel time for New Braunfels this morning, a little higher to normal at 29 minutes on 35 into downtown San Antonio. Also 29 minutes from Seguin on I-10 or half an hour. That's fairly normal, 24 minutes on I-10 from Bernie. And we'll have another update coming up. Mark, Stephanie? What's being called the most extensive gambling bust in decades is adding up to a lot of work for the Bear County Sheriff's Office. Deputies have been on site all night long at an ordinary looking building on the city's north side. Katrina Weber is there in the 3700 block of Blanco with a live report. Now, Katrina, we understand it seems ordinary on the outside, but was very unusual inside. Now, unusual indeed, according to the sheriff, that they found this building full of gambling machines as well as a lot of other things. Now, right now, deputies are here. It seems they've been keeping an eye on the situation all night, watching over this building. But yesterday, they were definitely here in force for what seems like a very forceful takeover of this building. You can see all of the broken windows along the front of it. Uh, and again, they found what he says was a very extensive illegal gambling operation inside this building. I want to show you some of the video. The sheriff, Sheriff Javier Salazar, says that they found hundreds of uh, illegal gambling machines, some working, some not, along with weapons. People throughout several rooms in this building, about a dozen people, and they say a 16-year-old girl who they suspect may have been involved or the victim, perhaps, of human trafficking. 
Now they did come and take over this building. Uh, it's unsure exactly how many of the people, if any of them, were involved and what charges they might face. But uh, again, the deputies have been here all night long. Uh, the sheriff at one point had SWAT officers along with gang units and, and also uh, uh, other deputies here, other investigators here, who uh, went through this building and again, seizing all of that property, taking those people into custody. But we don't know yet how many of them, if any, will be charged. And the sheriff says that they do plan to question that teenage girl to see exactly what was going on because they suspect she may have been a victim of human trafficking. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. A suspected drunk driver rear ends a Castle Hills police officer's vehicle on a call and then allegedly tries to drive off. Holy That's the dash cam video of that crash as it happened along Northwest Military Highway just north of Loop 410. Officer Jose Morales, just three months into his new career, says he was a little confused because the vehicle came out of nowhere, but he maintained his cool and was able to follow the suspect and call for backup. It happened on Sunday around 7 p.m. No one was hurt. That suspect, identified as Alejandro Herrera, was booked for DWI and failure to stop. The arrest report says he had bloodshot, glossy eyes and thought he was in the state of Illinois. In this world of Lyft and Ubers, right, if you're gonna be able to spend money and go out and drink alcohol, like, why would you, and as an adult, make the conscious decision to do that? Because I'm glad it was me and not like some lady and her kids. Like, because that's the reality. Is that what I thought about later? It was, you know, at least it was me and not some child and kids. Two other Castle Hills police officers had a close encounter two years ago when a suspected drunk driver plowed into their crash scene. One person died, others were injured. The trial for that suspect is expected to happen at the end of the month. The housing market still breaking records across the country with national home prices surging to a 15 year high. Realtors and economists say there simply aren't enough homes to keep up with the number of aspiring buyers. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze explains. When they started house hunting in the Bay Area last fall, Mashakan Abhinav Guha soon realized just how hot the market had become. In November, we had a kind of a budget in our mind, and this would be the max we would go to. We have certainly blown out that number, and we are still finding ourselves short. Nearly 100 home visits and nine failed offers later, they're starting to get creative. We're 49ers season ticket holders, so we've talked about maybe, uh, uh, you know, including the season tickets or maybe certain game tickets uh, with the offer. So you're willing to give up your 49ers season ticket for a home offer? <laughs> with, a, with a heavy heart. <laughs> Record low interest rates and remote working convinced many renters over the past year to try to buy a home. This huge wave of millennials, especially age 25 to 34, who were just poised, mostly renting, poised to jump into homeownership. The pandemic was what tipped millions of them into making that decision. And interest rates are just kind of supercharging that. The problem, existing homeowners aren't leaving their houses during the pandemic. And the cost of building new homes is surging thanks to backlogs in the supply chain of materials. Lumber prices have soared more than 200% in the past year. This lack of new homes combined with the surplus of potential buyers is contributing to the biggest yearly increase in housing prices in 15 years. The long-term effects could be detrimental for aspiring home buyers in pursuit of the American dream. We talk about the American dream and how we are in pursuit of that and we have been successful to some extent and there are some more steps uh, that, uh, that we need to do, complete that dream and the house and that life in that house is part of that dream. For ABC News, I'm Elizabeth Schulze in Washington. Here at home, more traffic authority coverage now. One of the oldest streets in San Antonio getting a makeover as work on Commerce Street continues. A stretch of the busy roadway is closed as crews replace aging utility lines. Our Samuel King joins us now. And Samuel, that's only a small part of the work. 
Uh, that's right, uh, Mark and Stephanie. The city says replacing the gas line is in preparation for the complete reconstruction of Commerce Street from St. Mary's to Santa Rosa. This week, the section from Flores to Laredo is closed for the work. This is the first major work on Commerce Street in decades. It's a part of a another 2017 bond project approved by voters and this one is pretty high profile as it's inside the planned zona cultural district and close to some major sites like the cathedral when the overall project is done the area will have a completely new look with wider sidewalks new landscaping and lighting the city's paul berry says it will be all worth the disruption Anytime you have construction, it requires patience. But the focus needs to be on what it will be like when it's over instead of what it's like while it's taking place. And the city has opened a single lane of westbound traffic and sidewalks are open on the north side of the street to allow access to businesses in a one block stretch there that will reverse as this to the south side as this work continues. Now this phase should be completed by next Saturday the 15th weather permitting and the entire Commerce Street project is set to be completed by next spring and next hour we'll have a look at how a long time business is reacting to this construction work. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you very much, Samuel. 10 minutes past the hour, we're now at 61 degrees. And coming up next, our great graduate series continues with a local student who's keeping a family tradition alive. Outside with live cam, fantastic temperatures yet again this morning. Mike says we could drop below 60 degrees. We'll get an update on that and look ahead to Mother's Day weekend. Still to come right here on GMSA. It's that time of year when we hide several outstanding graduating high school seniors in our great graduate series. This morning, Sarah Costa introduces us to Alex Castillo from St. Anthony Catholic High School, who is keeping a family tradition alive and going to the University of Notre Dame. Alex Castillo has managed to play football, basketball, and baseball, stay in the top 10 of his class, and complete 100 hours of community service during his four years at St. Anthony Catholic High School. His baseball coach, Michael Salas, says it's been amazing watching him excel. His grade work, his school work, uh, his athletic ability all enhanced day by day. So I think that's a tribute to his work ethic. He has a tremendous work ethic. Alex says time management and discipline are what helped him keep focus. And when the pandemic struck, he was forced to stay at home for half of the year. His family supporting him and reminding him to stay on top of his work really helped him through. Stuff like that really goes a long way because you really need that support sometimes, especially when you're at home and it's so easy to stay in bed and be lazy and stuff like that. And that extra push to stay focused really helped. Next year, he will be attending the University of Notre Dame, where he plans to study computer science, and he is keeping a tradition alive. It's like a family thing, actually. Both my parents went there. So. Both my parents and then my brother just got in. He's studying aerospace engineering. I think he has an outstanding family upbringing. His parents are outstanding people, and he surrounds himself with, with key people who are going to influence him. Alex says also having a positive attitude that he learned from playing sports has helped him excel in life as well. It's kind of like in life, I mean, you get down, I mean, but you have to have short-term memories and just have a positive attitude because having a negative attitude isn't really going to take you anywhere. His coach says he believes Alex will have a lot of success in his future. I really do see him very successful as not just a family man, but as a, a human being to society. Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. It's now 516. Still ahead, how Google's latest feature is making it easier to get to your entertainment content on your Android tablet. Tackling tough messes can take more time than you have, so the mess has to wait. But Mr. Clean Clean Freak delivers the power of a deep clean in minutes. Unlike leech sprays, Clean Freak starts deep cleaning on contact with three times the cleaning power to break down tough messes in seconds. It quickly cleans tough stovetop messes, stainless steel, and even cuts through tough bathtub soap scum. So for a deep clean in minutes, get Mr. Clean Clean Freak. Also available in easy to switch refills. My cholesterol is borderline. I figure I can worry about it or do something about it. Garlic helps maintain healthy cholesterol safely and naturally. It's odor and taste free with guaranteed potency. I'm taking charge of my cholesterol with garlic. A capsule a day visibly fades the dark spots away. New Neutrogena Rapid Tone Repair. 20% pure vitamin C. A serum so powerful, dark spots don't stand a chance. 
See what I mean? Neutrogena. In today's Tech Bytes, Facebook has launched a new feature to connect neighbors. It's called Neighborhoods, and it looks a lot like the popular app Nextdoor. People in the same communities can share local interests, concerns, and recommendations. Neighborhoods is available in Canada and coming to the U.S. soon. Google is launching a new feature on Android tables called Entertainment Space. The company says it's a gathering place for all video apps, games, and books. Entertainment Space will set up your own personal profile and customize all your content. And finally, bigger images on Twitter. Users' pictures are not being cropped as much as before, so previews will show much more of any image you post. Some observers are already complaining the larger pictures take away the impact of open for surprise tweets. Surprise, Twitter making changes. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. That's funny. I'm okay with that because sometimes people are trying to, uh, you know, like like hold something and you have no idea you just see someone's face. We're right? going to scroll anyway, right? Yeah. And we'll yeah. see what the big deal is. 521 Samuel's here with an update on our morning commute so far. Hey, good morning, Mark and Stephanie. We have, uh, this is a stalled VIA bus. This is at 281 <laughs> southbound uh, near the almost exit there. So you can see that they're trying to figure out what's uh, going on there. Traffic is still uh, going by here. Uh, this is by, this is uh, the on-ramp here, and this is uh, the main lanes of traffic. So just something to uh, watch out for. And again, this is how that looks on the map. Again, that's 281 uh, southbound at almost looking throughout most of the rest of the area a little map uh, things are looking mostly fine but we still have some issues up here in the new Braunfels area this morning early on 35 down to 20 miles per hour southbound on 35 there in New Braunfels. So let's take a look at how that's impacting your travel time. Uh, just getting to loop 410 at this hour, 24 minutes, 19 minutes heading the other way. So that sort of delay is unusual for this hour. So if you're planning to travel from the New Braunfels area into San Antonio, you might want to plan some extra time this morning, guys. That's a good idea. Thank you, Samuel. Sunrise or sunset? You know what? It did not list it on there. I would guess a sunset. Okay. Beautiful. Got a 50-50 chance to flip a coin on that one, but whatever the case may be, yeah, like you said, Steph, it is beautiful out there, and we're going to have another uh, beautiful sunrise and sunset later on today, so it'll be uh, winter on both ends of the day. Nothing going on out there uh, by the airport right now, and uh, once the sun starts to come up, we're going to be able to see all those clear skies. 61 at the uh, airport right now, but notice how Port S.A. and Randolph boat dropped down to 57. Yep and 49 right now in comfort. So it is definitely jacket weather. Even Bernie Stage is down to, to 50 right now. So uh, jacket weather is definitely a good idea out in portions of the hill country. And then we're going to be gaining a good, oh gosh, um, you know, maybe 25, close to 30 degrees in some cases, getting up to uh, right around uh, the mid 80s later on today. Now, as far as the humidity, dew points remain very low. Uh, we're, you know, that's what's allowing temperatures to drop down. That's going to be the situation again tomorrow. Uh, maybe not quite as cool, but still, I mean, down around 60 or so. Then the humidity really comes back in here over the weekend, and especially by Mother's Day, we're going to be looking at uh, dew points well up in the upper 60, 70. So it's going to be uh, hot and humid. I mean, low, almost mid 90s on Mother's Day and plenty of humidity out there. It will start to drop off by the middle part of the week, but also right in this area about Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. That's when that humidity once again, good thing is going to get squeezed out in the form of some rain. So we do have some as of right now, now granted we're looking at Tuesday, Wednesday, so a few days off, but decent chances for rain going into the middle part of next week. Nothing out there today, nothing out there tomorrow, maybe a cloud or two uh, starting off tomorrow morning. And then by Saturday morning, the humidity really comes back in here, so we'll have a couple of uh, sprinkly showers. I know this is kind of broad brush, but this is just a very you know, light sprinkles, maybe a little shower here and there. Some sunshine mixed in with the clouds Saturday morning, or excuse me, Saturday afternoon. Sunday morning, we'll have a couple of more sprinkles out there. And then I think a mixture of sunshine and clouds once again on Sunday, maybe leaning toward the cloudier side. We're gonna have to watch out for some of those showers way up there to the northeast if something decides to try and come into our northeastern uh, counties by late Sunday. But then Monday, we'll have a better chance for some rain going into late Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of next week. So. 
that's an encouraging forecast and we'll also see temperatures kind of go down a little bit peak on Sunday and then start to uh, drop down a little bit toward the middle of next week. 77 at noon today. Sunny skies. Another one of those just to open up all the windows kind of a day. It is so pleasant out there. 85 a high temperature today. Wind out of the east about uh, 10 15 miles per hour tomorrow. Another great looking day. 60 starting off upper 80s. It is going to be warmer tomorrow and it looks like the humidity is going to kind of hold off throughout most of the day tomorrow. Then tomorrow night it comes back in here and it's going to be humid this weekend. Sprinkles, a lot of clouds, 93 going for Mother's Day, but then some rain chances next week. I keep asking Steph what she wants for Mother's Day. I'm going to switch the focus back to Mike now. Have you okay. done your due diligence yet? Uh -oh. Done your homework? Yes. Done some mm -hmm. planning? Yes. Yes. Good. Have Plenty you decided on the menu yet? Yes. Okay, good. Oh, good. Can you give us a sneak peek? Eggs Benedict. Eggs, I asked, eggs. I listed a whole bunch of different things and then okay. Eggs Benedict. So, so you're, nice. you're, you're ready to go. And you sent your card, Mark? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Cards went in the mail Monday, okay. took them straight, <laughs> walked inside the post office. Right. Yeah, I know things are running slow right now, so I gave it a shot. And flowers have been ordered. Aww. I'm just not saying when they're coming yet. 526, oh, okay. about 62 degrees. And up next in your morning spotlight, a first look at Andrew Garfield's new movie. Plus, there's a record number of entries in this year's Disability Film Challenge Awards. This is just feeling so bright. We're about to go stratospheric. Andrew Garfield goes for social media influencer stardom in mainstream. Writer-director Gia Coppola, Francis Ford's granddaughter, even had Garfield shoot a scene naked on Hollywood Boulevard. It was really, really fun. It was, as you can imagine, like, again, it was that those... You know, a, a, a life short moment of, you know, Gia said, would you be comfortable doing this? And I said, well, well, yeah, when else am I going to get an opportunity to do this and not get properly arrested? So let's 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 get out there. Open to filmmakers with and without disabilities who want to challenge how disabilities are viewed and inspire change. A record 93 films from all over the world entered the 2021 Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge. And it's time for the awards. This year's winners will be announced in an online gala ceremony Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific. You can watch at disabilityfilmchallenge.com. Sound of Metal Oscar nominee Paul Racy and Millicent Simmons from A Quiet Place Part 2 will be among the presenters. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Time check. Bottom of the hour, 530 on the dot, 61 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, the U.S. says it would support easing patient rules, excuse me, patent rules on COVID-19 vaccines. We're going to let you know why and when that could happen. And good morning. Welcome back. It is Thursday, May 6th. I'm waiting for the temperature to fall below 60 degrees one more time. It happened yesterday morning, and Mike says we probably are going to repeat. I think so. We're at uh, 61 right now at the uh, airport and looking off to the east. And as you can see, I can't tell the camera, but look at the moon right up there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Perfect. It is uh, just rising right now. We're not seeing the glow of the sunrise as of yet, but uh, it should be in about maybe half an hour or so. We'll start to see that orangey glow, and it's going to be just absolutely gorgeous again uh, this morning like it was yesterday. Whoops, let me go over this side. 61 right now. Dew points down to 52, so we've got clear skies, no wind, and very dry air, and those are the ingredients. And we always talk about this, especially in winter months, the radiational cooling. You get all those three ingredients, and, you, and that allows temperatures to really drop down. So, yeah, we are going to be uh, continuing to drop down a couple of more notches in the next few hours. And again, there is just hardly a breeze out there at all anywhere. A little puff of a wind out there, Randolph, as well as in New Braunfels. A mold is on the high side. It has been going down uh, for the past about two, three days, and it should continue to drop down later on today. Grass and pigweed, excuse me, grass and pecan, beg your pardon, are both on the low side. 77 at noon, 85, a high temperature today. Sunshine, clear skies, beautiful, great sunrise, great sunset today, low humidity. Still going to hold out, keep the humidity away throughout most of the day tomorrow. So I think we're going to have uh, three in the row, three in a row as far as some fantastic days. And that's going to be it. Humidity comes back over the weekend. Got some rain chances way down the road. Talk about that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King. I know we had a uh, what, stalled bus earlier. Anything big going on? Yeah, we still have uh, that situation there, Mike. This is 281 southbound and almost. Looks like a vehicle has arrived there to check things out. And meanwhile, you have some law enforcement there behind uh, the bus and that other vehicle. 
uh, to try to let people know uh, that this is what's going on. Again, 281 and almost near uh, Hildebrand uh, this morning. Traffic still flowing well, not seeing too much traffic there this morning, so that's a good thing. But here's how that uh, looks on the map here. This is saying Hildebrand, but it's probably a little north of there, closer to uh, almost. Again, southbound on 281 this morning, that stalled bus is there. Looking out throughout the rest uh, of the region, not too much going on except up in the New Braunfels area. Still have these delays on 35 this morning, down to 26. 7 miles per hour coming out of New Braunfels. So that gives you a travel time of 31 minutes, uh, which is unusual for this uh, time of morning. Maybe later in the morning it would be a good time, but 31 minutes again from New Braunfels into downtown San Antonio, 26 minutes on 281 from Belverde, 25 minutes on I-10 from uh, Bernie. And we'll have another update on everything coming up, guys. Mark, Stephanie, over to you. Thank you, Samuel. Drugs, weapons, and illegal gambling machines are just some of what the Bear County Sheriff's Office found inside a building on the city's north side. Investigators made the bust last night in the 3700 block of Blanco Road. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. Now, Katrina, you mentioned earlier that investigators are still there this morning. Any idea why? Well, Sheriff Javier Salazar told us last night that this is a monumental task. They are going through every inch of this building, which is 25,000 square feet. He says they also plan to break open all of the machines, all of the gambling machines that they found inside, and there were hundreds of them. Now, this looks like it was a pretty forceful uh, takeover of this building. We can see broken windows all along the front here, and inside uh, they say that they found what they consider the most extensive illegal gambling operation. Let me show you the video uh, that was provided to us. According to the sheriff, they had about 100 operational illegal gambling machines, as well as hundreds of others, he says, that were not working, that were uh, from the past. They also found drugs, uh, drugs, weapons, people, they say they found people in several rooms throughout this building, about a dozen people in all. And that includes a 16-year-old girl who the sheriff says they suspect may have been the victim of human trafficking. He says that uh, his investigators had been doing an undercover operation here, and during that time they discovered what they believe was human smuggling involved here as well. Yesterday he had the SWAT team as well as uh, the gang unit and also members of his his um I'm sorry, his organized crime unit uh, take part in this bust. And again, they went through this building, but they have a lot more searching to do, uh, both the building as well as the machines, and they plan to do all of that today. In fact, we were told that they want us to move across the street so that they can bring in more vehicles and more uh, of the deputies and investigators to continue searching this building. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Big operation out there. Katrina, thank you. We know you'll keep us posted. 538 now to a major decision in the global battle against COVID-19. The U.S. says it would support easing patent rules on vaccine formulas. Britt Conway has more on why and when that could happen. For more than a year now, the world has been fighting COVID-19. In some parts of the world, we've really improved. I'm going to come back next week as well. In other parts of the world, the virus is spreading rapidly. The World Health Organization says there have been more global cases in the last two weeks than the first six months of the pandemic. And yet leaders from the WHO remain hopeful. We really have a shot at controlling COVID. But part of that means shots in arms. Easier said than done, depending on the country where you live. Now, the U.S. says it will support a petition easing patent rules on COVID-19 vaccines. What India and South Africa have asked for is a temporary waiver to address the pandemic. There's been pushback from U.S. drug makers and pleas to push ahead from global advocacy groups. One official says the White House met with more than two dozen stakeholders before making its decision. It was a statement that put people over patents. It was about hmm. leading in the world and helping producing what the world needed at a time of unprecedented crisis. It's not a done deal, though. Members of the World Trade Organization have to unanimously agree, and that could take months. But health experts say it's a step in the right direction. If we help uh, work and collaborate with countries around the world, I do believe we will turn this pandemic around. No one is safe until everyone is safe. The end game is the equitable distribution of vaccines. I'm Britt Conway reporting. 
Many people will spend part of today talking to a higher power for a national day of prayer. In 1952, Congress proclaimed a joint resolution for a national day of prayer. At the time, President Harry Truman chose July 4th for the designation. Years later, President Ronald Reagan moved it to the first Thursday in May. Many will use today to focus on prayer for local, state, and national leaders, as well as members of our military. Some will visit a church, temple, synagogue, or mosque to pray. Others will attend prayer events that are non-denominational or just spend solemn moments in the privacy of their homes. A milestone for SpaceX and its mission for people to one day visit Mars. The aerospace technology company launched another test flight of an early Mars rocket prototype Wednesday. The SN-15 soared up to about six miles above Earth, completed a series of aerial acrobatics, then relit its engines and landed upright on a landing pad. The vehicle is the fifth of SpaceX's rocket prototypes to attempt such a landing and the first to do so successfully. All the prior missions ended in explosions. SN-15 is an early uh, iteration of Starship, the vehicle that could one day carry the first humans to Mars. I watched the video yesterday, you. kind of like, it's, is it gonna, is it gonna? Uh, and it actually and it did. didn't explode. Right. Yeah, they're working out the kinks. That's very exciting, glad, glad to see that happen. 541, about 61 degrees. And still ahead, we'll tell you why popular exercise equipment company Peloton is recalling all of its famous treadmills. And a closer look at how the latest technology could help keep you safe while travelers head back to airports everywhere. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we are again in the nice 60s. Yeah, we'll take it. Uh, so enjoy this because we are expecting it to heat up a little bit this weekend. We'll be right back. 544 as COVID restrictions are slowly rolled back. Many travelers are headed back to airports. Ursula Perry shows us how some airports are using latest monitoring technology to keep you safe from COVID-19. These travelers arriving from down south at Flint Bishop Airport in Michigan are greeted warmly by an officer. How are you? But what they don't realize is hiding behind the visor on her helmet is a tiny camera scanning their temperatures. It red flags anyone registering 100.4 or higher. 97.4 degrees. The smart helmet is a new tool to help detect COVID-19. The brain of it is uh, right up here in the top. It has a camera on the front of it right here, and it also has an infrared camera on the Picatinny rail on the side of it here. Um, that's thermal imaging. The helmet can scan up to 30 people at a time from 21 feet away. It was developed by a company in Italy and first used in Rome. When we started the first with the pandemic, we did take temperatures just remotely with an officer here at the door, but we were missing the uh, people coming off the plane, and that was a big gap. The display on the inside looks like a 72 inch screen in front of the user's right eye. It's giving the flying community some added peace of mind. Only one person at the Flint Bishop Airport in Michigan was detected of having a fever through this method, but then a secondary reading showed she did not. It's believed it was because she was wearing a mask and a big heavy coat in the winter, something you likely won't see at the San Antonio Airport this summer. Ursula Perry for Good Morning San Antonio. Thanks, Ursula. Good to see you. 545. Up next, an important recall you need to know about regarding a popular exercise treadmill. And welcome back. It's about 548 in your morning consumer headlines. Walt Disney World making a slight change to its COVID-19 guidelines. Disney says it is ending temperature checks for staff and guests at its parks. Disney said it came to the decision following the advice of the CDC and local health officials. The on-site temperature screenings for cast members will end on May 8th and for guests on May 16th. Park reservations to limit capacity and face coverings are still required. Peloton recalling thousands of its trademark treadmills. About 125,000 of its Tread Plus and Tread devices are included in the voluntary recall. The Consumer Product Safety Commission issued a warning about the equipment last month and requested the company issue that recall. It's noted that one child has died and at least 70 others were hurt in incidents tied to the treadmills. Peloton refused the recall at first, but now its CEO has issued an apology and admitted it was a mistake to push back against that request. And earlier this morning, there were problems for a uh, VIA bus off mm -hmm. of 281 and almost. Let's go ahead and check back with Samuel King. Well, Stephanie and Mark, looks like that bus is on the move, no longer stalled there on the southbound lanes of 281 and almost. Still have an emergency vehicle there 
uh, for the moment. But we expect that to uh, get moving here shortly. And, and there it goes. You can see it <laughs> there. So that's sort of the last remnant of that situation there, 281. And almost again, uh, we had a stalled bus here uh, on the right shoulder there, but that has been cleared. So that's a good thing. We can take this off the board and uh, forget about it for now. I also have a crash here on the northwest side, Old Babcock Road and Babcock Road. But our other big issue remains up here in New Braunfels on 35 down 11 miles per hour there just south of State Highway 46. So again, just taking a look at how that's impacting your travel time coming in from New Braunfels just to get you to 410, 26 minutes right now, 19 minutes the other direction. So if you are someone who travels from New Braunfels toward the San Antonio area this morning, might want to give yourself some extra time until that's clear, guys. Thank you for the heads up, Samuel. And a very uh, nice or icky picture from Avon <laughs> this morning. Say, yeah, good way to put it. Uh, it's always fun, you know, get out there and even with the kids and kind of explore and see what's going on. But yeah, a buck moth caterpillar and the warning from Avon says it will sting you. Make sure the kids do not touch that. Just from the looks of it, I wouldn't want to do it on general principle, but anyway. <laughs> it's not like you're going to pet the thing, right? No, I mean, it's not like it's big, you know, the big furry caterpillar, the monarch butterfly caterpillars. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the uh, you pet those, the brown, and, <laughs> yeah. the brown and orange ones or black and orange ones. Uh -huh. Those are the monarchs, right? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. uh, uh, fla yeah. again, we don't know flowers or insects very well at all. <laughs> no, <laughs> so we're just grasping at straws here. Anyway, if it if it looks kind of eh, don't pet it. So um, <laughs> what, what are you laughing at? I mean, isn't that a good rule of thumb uh, for, for pretty much everything, Mike? Uh, yeah. OK, yeah. Uh, we've got clear skies right now and uh, 61 degrees here in town, down now to 48 in comfort. So it continues to cool off. Burning stage at 50, 53 Bulverde. Jacket's pretty good idea in some locales. Yesterday, we made it up to 84 here in town. 90 Catula, 93 Laredo stayed at 79 in Hondo and we'll be uh, in the ballpark again today. The same as yesterday, but maybe a couple of degrees warmer than that 85 here in town so mid 80s and then we'll go into the upper mid upper 80s a little more widespread tomorrow but still you know humidity is great today it's gonna stay that way throughout the afternoon and I think we'll still have some pleasant humidity throughout most of the day tomorrow then by probably the evening hours is when the humidity is going to start to come back on in here um, Nothing going on today as far as any clouds now as same thing tomorrow. Then Saturday morning we have the humidity really coming back on in here. So it's going to be a whole different story. Basically, when you go to bed Friday night, wake up Saturday morning, uh, humidity is going to be there. We'll have lots of clouds, maybe a couple of sprinkles around the area on Saturday and some sunshine mixed in during the day with the cloud cover and then more clouds again on Sunday. We'll have some sprinkles around here and uh, I think we may keep a few more clouds around on Sunday. Day. Also, notice how those uh, showers get going well up to the northeast. Some of those could try to creep in into our northeastern counties later on Sunday. We're just going to have to kind of monitor that situation because the atmosphere is going to be very kind of volatile on Sunday and it depends if anything gets going. Then by overnight hours, Monday, we'll have a couple of sprinkly showers around here. Better rain chances late Monday than going into the middle part of next week. Temperature is going to be peaking on Sunday. We'll make it up into the low, even mid 90s, plenty of humidity, but then they will start to decline somewhat going into the middle part of next week as the rain chances go up. 77 degrees today at noon, sunny skies and high temperatures today in up to 85 low humidity. Great day again. Open up the windows tomorrow. More of the same. It will be hotter in the afternoon getting in toward the mid and upper 80s and then a lot more humidity over the weekend. Morning sprinkles and rain chances middle of next week. Thank you, Mike. Hot right Mother's now. Day. Yeah, 550. Yeah, it's going to be hot in here. I'm sorry, 553 and 62 yeah. degrees. <laughs> Let's look at your winning lotto numbers. Uh, pick three, six, two, five, fireball nine, live daily four, seven, zero, one, one, fireball one. Cash five, six, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, twenty-five, lotto Texas, one, two, nineteen, thirty-nine, forty-six, fifty-three, and powerball sixteen, twenty-three, twenty-eight, forty, sixty-three, powerball one, power play two. 
A reminder, Group Art students rising among the ranks in a nationwide competition. Students at Edison High School here in San Antonio created two pairs of vans for the custom culture competition. $50,000 is up for grabs, which the students hope will help use, uh, they'll use for their art program. You can help by voting for their Fiesta-inspired shoes, and we have a link on KSAT.com. Good luck, guys. During the past year, you may have noticed some areas of your home need to be upgraded. Still ahead on the morning show, the best ways to install some much-needed improvements around the house, some home upgrades. And Transkai, let's see how things are looking out there right now. Traffic really building in the last 20 to 30 minutes. 281 at Hildebrand. We've had a fairly incident-free morning commute so far, but we'll get an update on that. And we were also keeping tabs on some slowdowns in the New Braunfels area. Samuel King will have an update coming up. Now at 6, a massive illegal gambling bust on the city's north side. We're tracking the latest in a live report. Spurs got crushed in Salt Lake City last night. We've got a recap of the ugly night in Utah. And we are sad about that loss with the San Antonio Spurs, but we are happy with this beautiful weather we've been happening. And that another cool morning in the 60s. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Your top stories and traffic coming up. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, May 6th. Happy Thursday. Thanks for joining us and I hope you have some outdoor plans because it's a good time to enjoy that right now. Another fantastic morning out there. We got down to about 59 degrees. If I recall yesterday morning, Mike says we'll be yeah. in the vicinity today. We'll, you know, drop down a couple more notches there. Still got the, about an hour or so of some, some mm -hmm. cooling, if you will. And uh, look at the, you know, live cam or city camera. Um, what do we call this? Yeah, live, live cam. cam now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we'll change it next week. Whatever title it has now. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, we're starting to see the glow of the uh, the sunrise this morning. Absolutely beautiful out there. Another pleasant afternoon. We not cut the grass yesterday. If you have to cut your grass, it's still pretty. I mean, just to be outside in this great weather, no matter what it is. 61 in town, 51 in Kerrville, Fredericksburg at 50. Comfort at last check was actually down in the upper 40s, and we do have a lot of mold out there. Pecan and grass are on the low side. Mold has been going down the past couple of days, should continue to drop down given the fact we've got such dry air. And again, I think we dropped down a few more degrees into the upper 50s here in town once again, then a nice warm up throughout the day. We will gain Close to 30 degrees when it's all said and done. We'll be in the uh, mid to upper 70s today at noon and then finish up at uh, right around 85 later on today. Yesterday was 84 and so in that vicinity again. Tomorrow, I think the humidity is going to be holding off until probably the evening hours or the start of the return of the humidity. So we'll still have another really nice day tomorrow weekend. Not as nice. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King. Anything big going on out there, sir? Oh, good morning, Mike, and good morning, everyone out there. We've been telling you this morning, if you've been with us about the situation up in New Braunfels, now we have a trans guide view of it. This is 35 in Walnut. Appears to be some sort of crash there this morning. So uh, this is sort of where the emergency vehicles are. You can kind of see the uh, traffic backed up. Again, this is southbound, so this is heading inbound towards San Antonio. So we can look at that on the map here. Uh, this is the general New Braunfels and Comal County area. Then we'll zoom in here. So this is about a two mile backup here. You're down to seven to 14 miles per hour. Again, 35 at Walnut. So what's that doing to your travel time? We're coming in from New Braunfels 34 minutes now into downtown San Antonio, a little higher than normal for this time of day. 24 minutes coming in on I-10 from Bernie, 19 minutes coming in on US-90 from Castroville. Again, though, uh, watch out for this. If you're in Comal County in New Braunfels, north of Walnut Street, uh, Walnut Avenue, you might want to leave a little bit early uh, this morning to account for uh, this delay. And we'll have another update on this coming up soon. Thank you, Samuel. Well, they worked for hours yesterday, but the Bear County Sheriff's Office says they're not done yet. They're continuing to search a big building on the north side, believed to be the site of a huge illegal gambling operation. Katrina Weber is live in the 3700 block of Blanco Road with that story. Now, Katrina, we know that they made a haul in terms of property seized. What about arrest? 
Well, according to uh, Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar, they did take about a dozen people into custody, but he says it was unclear how many of them, if any, would face charges. Now, you notice that uh, we still have deputies here this morning. They, uh, those people were found in various rooms inside this 25,000 square foot building. And the size of this may be the reason why detectives still plan to search through this this morning. The sheriff says that they plan to go through every inch of the building. So far, he says they have found hundreds of working and non-working illegal gambling machines, drugs and weapons. And along with those dozen or so people that were taken into custody, investigators did find a 16-year-old girl. The sheriff says during their investigation, they noticed what appeared to be signs of human smuggling. So they do plan to question that teenager to see if she may have been a victim of that. He says that they're also going to break open all of those hundreds of machines to look inside. There's no word yet on how long this investigation will be going on, but the deputies did make us move from our position across the street. They told us that they needed to bring in extra vehicles and other uh, agents who will be coming in here to continue with the search. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. The San Antonio police still looking for suspects. They say shot and killed a 29 year old man on the city's northeast side. It happened around 645 last night at some apartments in the 2300 block of Austin Highway. Police say a man had gone to the complex to pick up a friend and was waiting in the car when another vehicle pulled up. Police say the people in a gray sedan said something to the man and then shot at him from inside their car. Investigators say the 29 year old was shot in the head and died there at the scene. No one else was hurt. We're going to have more on this story coming up in the next half hour of GMSA. San Antonio police and Crime Stoppers are asking for your help in finding the person suspected of robbing an East Side restaurant. That happened on Sunday around 11 a.m. at the Little Caesars in the 600 block of North New Braunfels Avenue. That's where police say the suspect approached the cashier with a weapon and demanded money before taking off. If you have any information that can lead to the arrest of this suspect, you are asked to call Crime Stoppers at number on your screen, 210-224-STOP. More traffic authority coverage now. One of the oldest streets in San Antonio getting a makeover as work on Commerce Street continues. A stretch of the busy roadway is closed as crews replace aging utility lines. Our Samuel King joins us um, now. And Bear Samuel, County that's Sheriff's only Office. a small part of the work. Yes, uh, indeed. Uh, this morning, Stephanie and Mark, the city says replacing that gas line is in preparation for the complete reconstruction of Commerce Street from St. Mary Street to Santa Rosa Street. This week, the section from Flores and Laredo is closed for the work. Now, this is the first major work on Commerce Street in decades. It's part of another 2017 bond project, which was approved by voters. Now, this one is pretty high profile, as is inside the planned Zona Cultural District and close to some major sites like the San Fernando Cathedral. When this overall project is done, the area will have a completely new look with wider sidewalks, new landscaping, and lighting. Businesses in the area, like Penners, are trying to look toward the future during the disruption. A little bit of inconvenience for a couple weeks, but the city's been great. They've been helping us, directing people towards our store, letting people come in. So we're getting through it. And the city has opened a single lane of westbound traffic from Flores to Cameron and sidewalks are open on the north side of the street to allow access to businesses like Penners. That will reverse to the south side as the work continues. You might be wondering when this is all going to be done. Well, the first phase could be completed by next Saturday the 15th. That's weather permitting. The entire Commerce Street project is set to be completed by next year. Mark, Stephanie. Thank you, Samuel. A suspected drunk driver rear ends a Castle Hills police officer on a call and then tries to drive off. Take a look at the dash cam footage of the crash right here. Happened Sunday around 7 in the evening along Northwest Military, just north of Loop 410. Officer Jose Morales says that his that car hit his patrol vehicle and it came out of nowhere, but he says he was able to follow the suspect and make an arrest. The suspect identified as Alejandro Herrera was booked for DWI and failure to stop. Two other Castle Hills officers had a close encounter about two years ago when a suspected drunk driver plowed into their crash scene. One person died, others were injured. The trial for that suspect expected to happen at the end of the month.
The Texas State Senate has passed a bill that would let Texans carry a handgun without a license. If signed by the governor, it would let anyone at least 21 years old carry a handgun without a permit unless they are prohibited from owning a handgun by state or federal law. In most cases, that would mean having a felony conviction on their record. The bill now goes back to the Texas House with eight Senate amendments. If the House approves those amendments, the bill then goes to the governor's desk. If the House does not accept all the amendments, both chambers will discuss their differences during a conference committee. The governor has promised to sign the bill if it reaches his desk. And there's still time to register to vote. June 5th runoff election that will decide five San Antonio City Council races, but time is running out. That deadline is at 5 p.m. today. We've got details on how to register posted for you on our website at kset.com. Time check, just about 610. Uh, We're in, let's see, the latest temperature, still 61 degrees. Still nice. Ahead on GMSA, our great graduate series continues with a high school senior who's not only going to be attending one of the best schools in the country, he's also continuing a family legacy. Outside with live cam, and the trend continues. Yesterday's sunrise was fantastic. Today, an encore performance. Take a look at your screen out there by 410 on your very busy Thursday morning. You're starting your day with GMSA, and we appreciate that. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It's about 613. It's that time of year when we start highlighting several outstanding graduating high school seniors in our great graduate series. This morning, Sarah Costa introduces all of us to Alex Castillo from St. Anthony Catholic High School, who's keeping a family tradition alive and going to the University of Notre Dame. Alex Castillo has managed to play football, basketball, and baseball, stay in the top 10 of his class, and complete 100 hours of community service during his four years at St. Anthony Catholic High School. His baseball coach, Michael Salas, says it's been amazing watching him excel. His grade work, his school work, uh, his athletic ability all enhanced day by day. So I think that's a tribute to his work ethic. He has a tremendous work ethic. Alex says time management and discipline are what helped him keep focus. And when the pandemic struck, he was forced to stay at home for half of the year. His family supporting him and reminding him to stay on top of his work really helped him through. Stuff like that really goes a long way because you really need that support sometimes, especially when you're at home and it's so easy to stay in bed and be lazy and stuff like that. And that extra push to stay focused really helped. Next year, he'll be attending the University of Notre Dame, where he plans to study computer science, and he is keeping a tradition alive. It's like a family thing, actually. Both my parents went there. So. Both my parents and then my brother just got in. He's studying aerospace engineering. I think he has an outstanding family upbringing. His parents are outstanding people, and he surrounds himself with, with key people who are going to influence him. Alex says also having a positive attitude that he learned from playing sports has helped him excel in life as well. It's kind of like in life, I mean, you get down, I mean, but you have to have short-term memories and just have a positive attitude because having a negative attitude isn't really going to take you anywhere. His coach says he believes Alex will have a lot of success in his future. I really do see him very successful as not just a family man, but as a, a human being to society. Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. That's very cool. He's keeping the family tradition alive. And again, congratulations to Alex. I just drove by St. A's the other day uh -huh. and, and I, I wish I'd met him. And Aww. now we kind of have. Now we have. Let's go ahead and check in with Samuel King. Yeah, that. Yeah, we still have a situation up in uh, Comal County in uh, New Braunfels area. Some major delays uh, there on 35, some sort of situation. You can see sort of the emergency vehicles there on the uh, trans guide uh, camera. So this is southbound. So this is heading uh, toward San Antonio. So we still have uh, these delays, as I mentioned. So let's take a closer look. Getting a little better, less of uh, the red, but it's still there down to 11 miles per hour in one stretch, about a two mile uh, delay there. But when it comes to your travel time coming into uh, San Antonio from New Braunfels, that area down to 29 minutes. So that's pretty good, a little above normal. So once you get past uh, that situation, if you are commuting from New Braunfels and north of there, uh, things do improve very quickly on 35. I-10 from Seguin into downtown, looking at 10 minutes uh, this morning. So again, just something to uh, keep in mind if you're in the Comal County area, just uh, watch out for this. It is a bit of a slowdown and it can get worse as we get through uh, the morning. So hopefully whatever the situation is, does get cleared up fairly soon, but otherwise not too much else uh, going on this morning, guys. Mr. Osterhage, party of four, yeah. your table is now available.
Good, thank you. I was just checking uh, some of the latest numbers here looking into next week and uh, rain chances can start to uh, kind of go up a little bit. Yeah, uh, going into the week, weekend. So. Well, going into next week is, okay. is our, our next uh, decent chance. I should look this way. So uh, <laughs> our next decent chance for some <laughs> rain it might have a couple little sprinkles coming in here in the mornings over the weekend. Now hitting the bus this morning and, uh, you know, especially in parts of the hill country, you may want to grab a jacket because it's kind of on chilly side. 58 degrees here in town. I think we'll drop down a couple of more notches from where we are right now and then later on this afternoon it is going to be absolutely wonderful with a high temperature up to 85 and low humidity great day to get outside take a look at this live camp picture i mean just spectacular great looking sunrise out there a repeat of yesterday we'll do it all again tomorrow as well and then sunset's going to be every bit as spectacular the aquifer boy oh boy have we benefited in about the past uh, what, week and a half or so of course we're really starting to decline drop down into stage two water restrictions and this was right toward the end of the month and then of course last weekend or right before that we started getting all the rain and the aquifer has gone up since its low point it's gone up almost 20 feet and that's in roughly the past couple of weeks and obviously fantastic news 61 degrees right now 50 in Bernie 48 comfort yeah jacket weather out there in parts of the hill country and again we've got some very dry air upstairs in the atmosphere not only down here but upstairs and so therefore that's why we've got those beautiful blue skies out there and gonna have clear skies all day long as far as the upper level winds over the next uh, few days we've got this little bit of a northwesterly flow in here and so that's why temperatures have been very pleasant and some drier air that's been kind of coming on in and then we'll start to uh, get this little bit of a uh, little modified ridge kind of moving on in here and that's going to help with the the humidity coming back in um, we'll get you know maybe a little disturbance trying to slide through here by late sunday into monday but as far as the the rain chances uh, really nothing over the weekend like i said other than a couple of sprinkly showers in the mornings just because the humidity is going to be coming back on in this low will stay up to the north of us, but it will again have some little bits and, and maybe kind of help out with some little waves, little bits of energy trying to slide through here late Monday. And then especially going into Tuesday, this more pronounced wave is going to try and move through here and that will help out and enhance the, the rain chances coming in here by the middle part of the week. And then once again, we get another sort of modified little um, northwesterly flow and that's going to help to knock temperatures down ever so slightly as we go into then looks like the mid to latter part of next week. Temperatures going to be peaking on uh, Sunday and then more clouds will help to keep things down a little bit and we'll start to decline going into uh, the middle part of next week. 77 degrees today at noon. Sunny skies. Good looking day. Just open up the windows kind of a day. Get outside. Enjoy it. Take your lunch outside. 85 for a high temperature today and then clear skies tonight. Another good looking day tomorrow. It looks like the humidity really won't begin its return until uh, tomorrow night and then Saturday a whole different story. Sprinkles in the morning, a lot more humidity, upper 80s, low to mid 90s Sunday, rain chances middle of the week. This really is the time of year to enjoy the outdoors. Even my husband who's working from home, usually he doesn't think about going outside. He even took the laptop and went outside to work. It was nice. It's just so, especially, you know, if you're in the direct sun, it's a little warmer, but you know, right. a little shade. Oh my goodness gracious. Nice. Perfect. We're loving it. Thank you, Mike. 620, about 60 degrees. And our San Antonio Spurs, our, our poor Spurs. So, so Spurs fans waking up disappointed this morning following a crushing defeat on the road to the best of the West. Want to make a name for yourself in gaming? Then make a name for yourself. Even if your office and bank balance are far from glamorous. That means expensing nothing but pizza. Your expenses look good and your looks are set for the month. Going up against this guy and pitching your idea a hundred times. No. Nope. <laughs> no. 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 I like it. He likes it. And you definitely love that. Intuit QuickBooks helps small businesses be more successful with payments, payroll, banking, and live bookkeeping. Okay, team, talk next week. For the mom who has two, three, or four full-time jobs. This is for you, Get mom. her the perfect gift what now at Macy's with an extra 25% off her favorite designers. Plus, get curbside pickup at Macy's.com. Millions are saying yes to Allegra, the number one allergist-recommended non-drowsy brand. Allegra works two times faster than Claritin, and unlike Zyrtec, it's non-drowsy. Say yes to the fastest non-drowsy 24-hour relief, Allegra.
And this morning's GMA First Look is America ready for space tourism. Blue Origin, created by Amazon founder Jeff Bezos, announcing it will launch its first crew into space on July 20th, with one seat going to the highest bidder. We're auctioning off the first seat to benefit our foundation, Club for the Future. Now, we don't know who the other crew members will be, but that one civilian makes it the first time any private citizen launches into space from American soil. The flight will last just minutes, enough to get a view of Earth from almost no gravity. This will ho hopefully open the door for many more people, um, civilians um, per se, to be able to come up and experience what we get to experience. So will other billionaire space ventures like Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic or Elon Musk's SpaceX follow Bezos's lead? It's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, Pittsburgh. DeMar DeRozan and the Spurs were hoping for a better night than Monday night in Salt Lake, but things went about the same last night. Tough Utah Jazz team overpowered the Spurs. The final 126-94. The Jazz shot 55% from the floor, led by as many as 41 points. With this win, the Jazz move into the number one spot in the league and in the Western Conference playoff race. For San Antonio, Lucas Simonich scored 15 points to lead the Spurs for the first time all season. Devin Vassell and Drew Eubanks each had 14 points. DeMar DeRozan had six points, which was actually his lowest scoring output since the month of January. Spurs have now lost five straight as they fight for that final spot in the NBA play-in tournament. Spurs hope to rebound in Sacramento. They'll take on the Kings tomorrow night at 9 o'clock. Late game for us. Meanwhile, in baseball, no luck either. The San Antonio Missions fell to the Corpus Christi Hooks last night. Final score from Whataburger Field, 4-2. to two. And time now is 626 and about 61 degrees right now. Ahead on GMSA, a train collides with an 18-wheeler just outside of Houston. And we've got the video you've got to see. And let's take a look outside the Rose with Transguide there. Loop 410 at Broadway. Things are starting to move this morning. I-35 at Alamo. We're going to check in with Samuel King after the break. A huge gambling bust last night continues to be a big job for the Bear County Sheriff's Office. Deputies are still here this morning. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you more about it. And new this morning, a big crash between a train and an 18-wheeler just outside of Houston. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, what a beautiful shot. And you know what, to match it this morning, we have beautiful weather. And a good morning to you. It is Thursday. It is May 6th. The other day was International Firefighters Day. We want to today salute our nurses. Thank you for your dedication and everything that you do, especially in the year that we've had. Yes, working so hard. So mm -hmm. if you can celebrate or have someone celebrate you, definitely. And it's beautiful if you want to do anything outdoors. A great time to do it. That's right. Look at that sunrise yet again yeah. this morning. Kind yes. of a repeat performance of yesterday. Exactly. You said you were out jogging yesterday? Yes. Perfect for it. It was beautiful. No humidity. <laughs> Cutting the grass. If you got to cut your grass from all the rain that we had, today's going to be another good day for it. And I think we're going to squeeze out another one tomorrow, too, before good. the humidity good comes news. back in here. But yeah, just uh, you know, open up your windows and take a look at that, uh, that sunrise this morning. Now, on the hill country, a uh, jacket's a pretty good idea because we've got some temperatures that are about 10 degrees or more cooler than what we are right now here in town. 61 out there at the airport. Dew point still very low at 53. And I think when it's all said and done, we will be in the uh, upper 50s. No wind to uh, speak of. And you can see those clear skies. Just a spectacular day. Now we do have a high amount of mold, although it has been dropping down the past couple of days, and I suspect it's going to be dropping down when the updated count comes out in about uh, 45 minutes to an hour or so. And uh, clear, coolish this morning. Nothing but sunshine today, mid 80s, about where it was yesterday, maybe a degree or two warmer than that. And very nice again tomorrow. I think the humidity, the return of the humidity holds off until the evening hours tomorrow, but it will definitely come back in here once we get into uh, Saturday and Sunday. It is going to be warming up this weekend, upper 80s and then low to mid 90s by Mother's Day. Lots of humid, some morning sprinkles and then Good news, we do have another chance of some rain coming in here by next week. All those details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King, and we haven't had too many big problems this morning. No, but just some issues here and there. Mike, good morning to you. Good morning to everyone out there. This is a US 90 at Loop 410 on the west side. Can't really tell from uh, this angle, but there are reports uh, of a crash here at this uh, interchange. Let's take a look at the map. 
again, 90 west at Loop 410. So that's just something to watch out this morning if you're on the west side. Looking uh, throughout the other sections of the map, looks like we have a stalled vehicle here on I-10. So we'll check that out. Also have some improvements to our situation in New Braunfels. We're telling you about I-35 southbound at Walnut. That has cleared, so your travel time now back fairly close to normal coming in from New Braunfels, 27 minutes on I-35. Speaking of US 90, 19 minutes if you're coming in from Castroville, so that's the normal time, 24 minutes coming in on I-10 from Bernie. So things looking well except for that crash there at US 90 and Loop 410. We'll have an update on that and some of the other incidents around town coming up. Mark, Stephanie? Thank you, Samuel. A big yellow building is surrounded by yellow crime scene tape on San Antonio's north side. Bear County Sheriff says it is the site of a huge illegal gambling bust. Katrina Weber is live in the 3700 block of Blanco Road with that story. Now, Katrina, any idea how long this investigation will be going on? No, we don't know that. Uh, we know the deputies are here right now, and they told us that they do plan to bring in extra vehicles. Now, this part of the operation has been going on since last night, but Sheriff Javier Salazar told us that the bust itself is actually the result of, of an investigation that has been going on for about a week. And it seems it has had a pretty big payoff so far. Salazar called it the most extensive illegal gambling operation in decades. Inside the 25,000 square foot building, he says they found gambling machines, drugs, money and weapons. The sheriff's SWAT team, gang and organized crime units all descended on this building yesterday. Although they had been watching things here for a while, they still were surprised by what they found. Probably upwards of 100 machines thus far. Uh, those are the operational ones. There's probably another couple hundred non-operational machines. And we're actually going to crack open all of those machines. The sheriff says they also found about a dozen people in various rooms within this building. Uh, one of them was a 16-year-old girl who they suspect may be a victim of human smuggling. Salazar said they plan to question her. They also will be sorting out what charges, if any, to file against all those people who were taken into custody. Now, it's anyone's guess again how long that they will be out here, but the sheriff did say that they will be searching every inch of that building right over there. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. That story continues to develop. Thank you, Katrina. San Antonio police left with questions after a man was shot to death at a northeast side apartment complex. This happened last night in the 2300 block of Austin Highway, just south of Perrin Bottle Road. Police are still searching for the gunman. Stephen Cavazos is live where that shooting happened with more on the ongoing investigation. Mark Stephanie, San Antonio police say the man had actually driven here to the Oak Manor apartment complex just before seven last night to pick up a friend. And it was during that time he was shot and killed at this apartment complex. And this morning, his killer remains on the run. Now, the man was actually waiting for his friend inside that car. And that's when a gray car pulled up next to him. And there was an exchange of words with the people that were inside that car. Now, it's not clear what was said, but at some point, someone in that gray par car that is pulled out a gun and shot the man in the head and he died again here on the scene. It wasn't long after police arrived to investigate. Now they are still searching for that gray car and the people inside. It's not clear if anyone else witnessed this shooting, but thankfully there were no other injuries that were reported. Now the Bear County Medical Examiner has not given a name to the victim as of this morning, but police say that he was possibly 29 years old. Again, this shooting remains under investigation. Reporting here on the Northeast side, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. This morning, a man is recovering after a scary overnight crash. It happened just before midnight at Loop 1604 in Babcock near UTSA's main campus. And that's where police tell us the crash sent the 30 year old man and his SUV rolling right off the highway. Firefighters had to rescue that man from inside his SUV. He was taken to University Hospital in serious condition. In person, jury trials are expected to resume as soon as next month. The case of former Precinct 2 Constable Michelle Barrientes Vela and her one time Captain Mark Garcia ranked towards the top of the docket. Barrientes Vela was removed from her office in 2019, then indicted on several charges, including tampering with evidence and official oppression related to her tenure as constable. Prosecutors say they are requesting internal affairs and personal records of officers that may be testifying in this case. For now, a pre-trial hearing is set for May 21st when a trial date could be announced. 
unbelievable moments. Frightening after a train collided with an 18 wheeler right here in Texas. It happened in Richmond yesterday. That's just outside Houston near Sugarland. Take a look at this video now. That 18 wheeler stuck on the tracks before it was hit and destroyed by that oncoming train. Luckily, no one was hurt. Here's some aerial video. It took crews several hours to clean up the wreckage there in Richmond. How scary. 638, about 60 degrees. And ahead on GMSA, some tips for upgrading your home on a budget. Welcome back. It's about 641. Our homes are where we spend most of our time, whether you own or rent. It's a large financial investment. And over the past year, you may have noticed some areas of your home that no longer fit your lifestyle and need to be upgraded. In this morning's Ask Angie segment, we're talking about how to upgrade your home to better fit your needs from a new soon to be familiar face, Bailey Carson from Angie, formerly Angie's List. RJ Marquez explains. Our homes have really become our everything, and with that, you may have noticed some areas that no longer fit your needs. Now is a good time to mix things up. One great idea is to turn a guest room or another room that is typically underutilized into a home office. Having a dedicated workspace is important for focus and productivity. Be sure to invest in some proper office furniture rather than spending all day at a makeshift desk at your kitchen island. Your office is an area where you should definitely prioritize your comfort. Before getting started, think about your vision for the room. Multi-purpose furniture can be a great investment, particularly if you think you're going to go back to an office at some point. Another favorite of mine is fresh walls. So think about repainting, or if you're a renter, temporary wallpaper is a great solution. Fresh walls it can totally change the look and feel of a room and elevate your mood. Think about using calming colors like soft blues, grays, and beiges, and avoid colors that can induce stress like red. In addition to spending more time in our homes over the past year, most of us have also been spending more time outside. With that, it's a great idea to make some upgrades that will make outdoor living and entertaining easier and more comfortable. One way to do this is by installing a porch or deck. After being cooped up all winter, I can't wait to get outside and socialize with friends. Adding a deck, pergola, or porch can be a great project to take on. It can really be fun and useful, and it not only looks great, but it increases the resale value of your home. The cost of new decks can vary depending on square footage, the type of materials used, and whether you choose to hire a contractor or do it yourself. A DIY deck might be an affordable alternative, saving you thousands in professional labor costs if you do it correctly. If you think you're up to the task, be sure to check your local codes for building a deck. And if you're not quite ready to do a DIY project of this size, it's best to call a pro. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. And these days, good luck finding a contractor. They are slammed and lumber prices yes. are out of this world right now. There's so much demand and not a lot of supply. Yeah, even if you want to do it yourself, you mm -hmm. still have to wait. That's right. Uh, let's go ahead and check in with Samuel King. Looks like there's problems there at Highway 90 and Loop 410. Yeah, and right now the traffic time coming in from Casherville looks pretty good. 19 minutes uh, for that. 28 minutes coming in from the Pleasanton area to downtown on I-37 and then 60 minutes on 35 to Lytle. But we do, as you mentioned, 70, have this situation here. This is US 90 at Loop 410, not on the highway itself. It is on the ramp here on, on the side, but that's still going to be a delay if you need to uh, connect uh, to Loop 410 there heading westbound on 90 toward Loop 410. So let's take a look at that on the map. Again, since it's on the ramp, you're not going to necessarily see it reflected here. Uh, the traffic flows, those still look pretty good on the main highway itself, but you saw what the effect was on, on the ramp. We also have some delays here on uh, Military Drive near Lackland, so that's just something to watch out for. Otherwise, things look okay. A few delays on 35, nothing like we saw earlier, and it does look like we're starting to see our daily delay there at Loop 410 at I-10 East, and we'll have a, another update on everything coming up. Thank you very much, Samuel. We live in a big city here in San Antonio. The great news, you don't have to go too far out of town before you can see a very starry night or morning. Yeah, I mean, because the lights around the city, you know, really tend to obscure a lot of the stars out there, but especially weather like this, when we have really, really dry air, and that's what it looks like out there in the hill country. And I mean, you go way out there and just look at night and gazillions, literally, of stars. It is beautiful out there. And if you want to take a little 
drive into the hill country tonight. It's going to be another fantastic night for doing all that uh, stargazing. Then that's going to be changing. You don't have to go far to check out a beautiful sunrise. It's going to be popping over the horizon in uh, just a couple of minutes, actually. And 61 degrees here in town. 50 Bernie State, still 48 at Comfort and 52 Bolverde. So light jacket, good idea for a lot of folks. The dew point temperatures remain on the comfortable side, below 60 for most everybody. A little bit higher down here along the coastal plain, as you would expect. But we're going to be staying pretty comfortable throughout the rest of today as far as the, the humidity is concerned and even overnight and I think throughout most of the day tomorrow. Now winds will start to shift around out of the southeast and then by late in the afternoon is when the humidity is going to start to come back in here and it'll really come back in overnight tomorrow night into Saturday and that's when we're going to have a couple of more sprinkly showers around here just because of all that extra humidity and lots of clouds and we'll see some sunshine mixed in in the afternoon. They do it all over again on Sunday morning. Some of those uh, little sprinkly showers around the area. And then late in the afternoon on Sunday. Now, I know this is well off to the northeast, but the atmosphere is going to be fairly volatile on Sunday. So what we're going to have to watch out for is some of these to try and work their way into our northeastern counties by late in the day on Sunday. Just it's one of those days. Just keep keep an eye out for that. And then overnight into Monday, more humidity around here and we'll have to watch out for a couple little sprinkly showers. Then the rain chances really start to go up as we go into Monday night late into Tuesday and Wednesday. So much better rain chances coming in here. Temperatures will be peaking on Sunday and then sort of dropping down a little bit more as we go on into the middle part of the week with those rain chances going up more cloud cover. 77 degrees today at noon. Sunny skies. Just a fantastic day. And then later on 85 high temperature about where it was yesterday. Maybe a degree or two above that. Low humidity. Very nice. So open up the windows. Same thing tomorrow. Again, I think we salvage most all of the day as far as the comfortable humidity is concerned. And then once we get into tomorrow night, humidity does make a return. We are going to make it up into the uh, and a mid and upper 80s tomorrow, upper 80s on Saturday, Sunday, 93 for a high temperature. And again, Saturday, Sunday, some of those uh, sprinkles, morning drizzle, stuff like that. And then some better rain chances move in here by especially late Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. Well, we've kind of spaced it out. We had the buckets and buckets of rain, and yes. now we've got that chance in the next week. Mm -hmm. So get your grass cut now because you wait too much, and it's going to be like, you know, you need a sickle to cut it. So Yes, that's true. Well, not only that, but you don't want to cut it on Mother's Day because, well, no. you want to take time to, you know, celebrate Happy mom, but, mom. But also you, you want to stay out of that heat. Gonna so be yeah, and so what is it you're gonna do? Early morning jog, and then you're gonna <laughs> yes. throw your jammies back on so you get breakfast in bed. So. I, yeah, I might do that. <laughs> I know that sounds silly, but that's a short window where it won't be so hot, and so it, you know they they know they know that I, I wanna I wanna run and. Don't bother me in the morning. If you see a lady in pajamas <laughs> Sunday morning, it was no, I won't her. run in my pajamas though. So. <laughs> All right, six forty-eight on your Thursday morning. Glad you're with us. And May is National Motorcycle Safety Awareness Month. Tomorrow on GMSA, our Samuel King talks about TxDOT's annual Share the Road, Look Twice for Motorcycles campaign, and what you can do to protect motorcyclists on the roads. Outside with live cam once again. It's a it's a, it's a beauty out there right now. Five star kind of day starting out here in South Texas. Top stories coming up. Good Thursday morning coming up here on GMA. Those new signs of hope in the fight against the pandemic. The CDC projecting a sharp decline in the virus by July. And what Moderna is revealing about their vaccine booster shots, also with the virus variants. Then Broadway is set to reopen at 100% capacity in September. Things are really looking up and we hope you'll join us right here on GMA. It was no stroke of luck. Bear County Sheriff says his investigators actually spent about a week working on an illegal gambling bust here on the north side. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. That bust took place right across the street in that yellow building, and it seems that investigators' hard work has paid off. The sheriff says they found hundreds of working and non-working gambling machines inside this building in the 3700 block of Blanco Road. They also seized weapons, drugs, and money, and took about a dozen people into custody here last night. One of them was a 16 year old girl who Salazar says may be a victim of human smuggling. But he says investigators plan to question that teenager to see exactly what was going on. 
He says they also need to sort out who, if anyone, will face charges here. And he says that uh, this will be going on, this part of the investigation will be going on for some time. There's no word on exactly how long they'll be out here today. Reporting from the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. A man is shot dead at a northeast side apartment complex, and this morning his killer remains on the run. This happened last night in the 2300 block of Austin Highway, just south of Perrin Vital at the Oak Manor apartment complex. San Antonio police say the man drove here to pick up a friend. The man was waiting in his car, and that's when a gray car pulled up next to him, and there was an exchange of words with the people in that car. It's not clear what was said, but at some point, someone in that gray car pulled out a gun and shot the man in the head. He died here on the scene, but it wasn't long after police arrived here to investigate. They are still searching for the gray car and the people inside. It's not clear if anyone else witnessed the shooting, but thankfully there were no other injuries reported. The Bear County Medical Examiner has not identified the man that was shot and killed, but police believe he was somewhere around 29 years old. Of course, the shooting remains under investigation. Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Later in the show, we are going to introduce you to Miss Perez, a special education teacher from SAISD who is making an amazing impact in her students' lives. That's today at 9. For now, let's go ahead and check back with Samuel King about the busy roadway right there at US 90 and 410. Yeah, this is the on-ramp to uh, 410 there at US 90. Stephanie still had this crash reporting, still seeing some delays, not seeing as many delays on US 90 itself. But again, this uh, on-ramp here, if this is something that you uh, take every day, 14 minutes now coming in from 1604 to 35 on US 90, so that is causing some delays eastbound. Uh, looking at the rest of the region, things look fairly normal, but we did have a crash here at Loop 410 at I-10 East, so that's something to watch out for this morning, Mike. Thank you, sir, and uh, first of all, take a look at uh, temperatures later on today, 85 degrees for a high, but let's just go back to this picture and just hold on this because it is an absolutely gorgeous sunrise. Temperatures are in the uh, 50s, low 60s, even some upper 40s in parts of the hill country, so a light little jacket, but an absolutely spectacular day. Open up the windows and enjoy it today, and I think we're going to get another one tomorrow, too. Uh oh, we love it. Thank you, guys. Enjoy the beautiful weather, and we'll see you back here at 9. Thank you.